realized that over the years I couldn't finish them myself because I kind of um, backed myself into a corner. And every time I'd call that track up, although I like the music, um, Banged and Blown Through is a good example of that one. Um, where I'd spent a lot of time working on the music, but I just couldn't, I, I didn't know how to finish it. So, like in Saul's case, um, when we first started working together, I said, look, I don't know what the result's going to be in this, but here's some stuff, you know, don't feel obligated to use it. I don't know if it's going to strike a chord or not. It certainly wasn't written with you in mind. I, hadn't, I didn't know you back then. But see if any of it resonates. And, you know, to both of our surprise, um, a lot of it he took and went in a super different direction than I would have gone. So uh, some of this stuff gets kind of recycled into those type of things. There's still, you know, a good portion of them around, but Generally, if they're in that pile, they're either not as good as other things, or I'm, I'm just stuck on them. But to answer your question, there's not, you know, I'm not Prince or Rivers Cuomo who brags about having hundreds of great songs, you know. And to that, I would say, Prince, if you have a hundred great songs or a thousand, how about picking a few and putting on your record that you put out because your last several have sucked, you know? <laughs> Same to you, Rivers, you know? I say that constructively, you know. Now this video is going to be... Yeah, I'm still me. I might be happy and engaged and all this, but I am I can still be a prick, so, you know. Oh, congratulations, by the way. Still got it. Still got it. Thanks. I'm just going to grab another water. I'll be back. Just mm -hmm. talk about yep. yourself. Okay. <laughs> All right, back. back. We're in the midst of uh, rehearsing right now, so we've been rehearsing for six hours. Hot outside, so I'm trying to hydrate here. Yeah, I hear that. And I have my water bottle right there, but hopefully that'll Cheers. Um, quick question about the whole uh, releasing the music. Uh, the recent two songs I released, Not So Pretty Now and Not Entity, they were taped and recorded, I'm assuming, in the With Teeth era. But they were just released now, and while you wrote with Teeth or so underneath Interscope, uh, Interscope, was there anything that you had to do with them to be able to release those two songs, or because they were never released, you were able to just release them? You don't really want to ask me that question, right? Because that would force me to say, I probably should have asked permission, and I didn't. So, <laughs> let's just go to the next. Okay, we'll pretend that question never happened. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, number three. What were some? <clears throat> excuse me. What are some non-related, non-music related things you've always wanted to do in your life and haven't gotten to yet? Would you really like to accomplish in the future? Well, some of those in the next several months, um, um, you're, you're going to see um, what I'm up to post this tour with Nine Inch Nails or outside of Nine Inch Nails is. Um, seriously putting some effort into that pile of things that I've been talking about or wanting to do that I haven't been able to do because of the um, demands of Nine Inch Nails and the scheduling and the going on tour, just stuff you never get to. You know, I will say it's some of it's software-based and some of it is storytelling-based. And like I said, I'm not trying to be secretive, but it will be something that will be announced um, in the fairly near future, what my plans are on that front. Um, aside from that, um, to, I don't know if this is part of the question or not, but regarding the putting Nine Inch Nails on hiatus and the final tour that we're about to start, it, it's really just a question of, or it's, it's been in response to thinking long and hard about um, relevancy and really trying to keep Nine Inch Nails as something that I feel pure about and not letting it turn into a job or something that is based on making money. Right. You know, and as I've gotten as I've gotten older, I've realized that um, you know I love touring and I love doing what I do, and I'm not in any means, in any way, complaining about that. But you start to notice the pages of the calendar flying off, you know, and you'll you'll have a friend that. Oh, got married and had a kid, and uh, that's the thing you don't know. The kid's four years old, and what have I done? Well, I've been on a tour bus playing the same shit every night in different places. You know, and I'm not, I'm not explaining this that well, but I need to, for my own mental health, I need to put more effort into um, being stationary 
and really trying to make Nine Inch Nails a precious thing. I'm not done making music. Uh, Nine Inch Nails is not done, uh, I'm sure, putting out music of some sort, but we are done touring. And um, I think being able to put a, put a cap on it and kind of say this is it has made every minute I've been doing it now seem more precious and more valuable, you know, because it's finite. And... Um, it's also a matter of, I'm, I'm just trying not to become a parody of myself, and I don't want to be, uh, I need to think about things, and I need, I need to really kind of um, just keep it cool. You know, like I, I watch my peers spin off into doing stupid shit to try to desperately try to stay relevant or trying to cash in. You know, and regardless of what you think of Nine Inch Nails, um, I know that I've always tried to do the very best I could do with it, you know, and I always think I made the right choice, and I knew when to say no. And I'm not saying every move has been the right move, but it's been done for the right reasons, you know, and it just feels like I need to take a breath and get, get re recollect myself. Yeah. I'm still... Oh, yeah. I can see you got kind of sad when I started saying that, but there's no reason. A little, reason. little tear came down. I tried to hide it. I'm, I'm tearing up my throat. You know. You know, what can you say? You have 20 glorious years of great music. 20 years is a fucking weird thing to think about, too. Like, you know, people started saying that last year, and it's like, 20 years? I don't watch it. You know, but it is, it is 20 years, and it's like, um, primarily I'm happy to be alive, you know, and I'm happy to have my brain and facility back about me, and I'm grateful that uh, people care, you know, and seeing this weird kind of um, relevancy that switched from, how do I explain it, it's when, when Downward Spiral took off in mid-90s, you know, it was weird to be on that roller coaster because you started off thinking one thing, and tour bus leaves, and you're playing theaters, and the next thing you know is a big hit on MTV, and then there's a big radio hit, and now you're playing arenas, and now you're selling out arenas, and now you have money all of a sudden, and now you have all these weird people that want to be your friends, and everyone's kissing your ass, and um, I'm getting off track in my rambling story, but the other thing I noticed then was there was a weird cultural point of reference that started to happen where you'd see yourself mentioned on David Letterman. You'd show up in a mainstream cart Sunday cartoon as, a, as just a cultural reference, you know? Right. And it, it's very strange to see your own thing, your own brand start to become this, oh, you know, very mainstream uh, thing, you know? And then in the later years, you get to see that disappear, you know, and question your, question your, your, your relevance. And it's been weird in the last year or so to see that kind of come back in, with a different shine on it. You know, maybe it's the the guy who's figuring out what to do with the Internet or whatever my big mouth has gotten me recognized for these days. But it, it's, it's weird to see it come back up, you know. Just, um, I don't know, just kind of rolling with it right now and trying to, you know, do the right thing. It's been great to see and everything that you've been doing. Uh, releasing music for free, uh, Ghost, Slip, the way you structured releases, other people, other bands are now following in the same step. You just really seem to be ahead of the curve for everything in music right now, for the for the most part. Well, on that tip, you know, we got thrust into it because of our relationship with Interscope coming to a close, you know, and it kind of was a gun to your head saying, what are you going right. to do? But yeah, the i got to say a few years... A few years into it now, I am quite surprised that where's everybody else? You know, what, what are other bands doing? I don't really hear much about many people trying to figure it out. It feels like everyone's sitting around waiting for someone to tell them what to do, or their manager to tell them to, oh, now you're going to do this, or you know, now you got to be in a right guard commercial. That's how you do it now. You know, whatever it is, it's it's, it's surprising to me that there's not a lot of um, musicians. I'm not saying n nobody is, but in general, I don't feel like I have a lot of... The bar's pretty low to get some attention doing stuff, because nobody's doing anything, it seems like. But hopefully that will change. Hopefully in the uh, next couple of years, more bands are uh, becoming independent, ending uh, record deals with the major companies. After that, after a couple of years, yeah, down the road, see all sorts of different stuff happening. 